It's Thursday, July 15th, 2010, and this is the Morning Swim Show Streamlined. After USA Swimming athletes won six ESPY awards last year, including five for Michael Phelps, swimming was shut out this year in the fan-voted awards show, which aired last night on ESPN. Phelps lost in the championship performance category to Drew Brees of the New Orleans Saints. Phelps was nominated in that category for his win and world record in the 100 fly at last year's World Championships. Rudy Garcia Tolson, a Paralympic gold medalist in the 200 IM and world record holder, lost in the Male Athlete with a Disability Award to hockey player Steve Cash. Garcia Tolson became the first double above knee amputee to compete in an Ironman triathlon last year. Emily Seabom, the second fastest 100 backstroker in a long course pool, set an Australian record today in the short course 100 back at the Australian Nationals. Seabom's time was 56.58, breaking Marika Guerra's record from last year. Seabom is still in heavy training, preparing for next month's Pan Pacific Championships. Other Pan Pac participants from Australia are swimming well this week. Katie Goldman, who will race in the distance events, almost broke the Australian record in the 800 free with an 8.12.65. Pan Pac team members Kyle Richardson, Ashley Callis, and Eamon Sullivan qualified first, second, and fourth for tomorrow's 50 free final with Matt Abood sneaking in as the third seed. Over at the European Junior Championships, Yannick Agnell is the top seed for tomorrow's 100 freestyle final. After posting a 3.46 in the 400 free final yesterday, Agnell coasted through the 100 free semis with a 49.51. He's about a second ahead of the field, which includes Mehdi Metala, the younger brother of French Olympic bronze medalist Malia Metala. Yaakov Jan Tumarkin of Israel came up just a little short of Laszlo Che's meet record of 55.06 in the 100 back with a winning time of 55.20, and Silka Lipuk wasn't too far off the meet record she set last year in the 100 free, winning the gold medal with a 55.31. The American men beat China yesterday 11-5 in the FINA Water Polo World League Superfinal, but they face a big challenge today when they play defending champion Montenegro. This will be the last preliminary game before moving on to the quarterfinals. And even if the U.S. loses to Montenegro today, they could still make it to the finals if they win their quarterfinal and semifinal matches. Debbie Hesse, the current CEO of USA Diving, has announced that she will become the new executive director of the USA Swimming Foundation. Chris LaBianco, who had been the head of the foundation since it started in 2008, resigned last week. Hesse will begin her work with the foundation on November 15th to enhance the Make a Splash initiative and raise funds to support the USA Swimming national team. Frank Parrington, a longtime supporter of swimming in Zimbabwe and South Africa, died Tuesday in his home in Harare, Zimbabwe of kidney and heart failure at the age of 85. Parrington helped nurture swimming in Zimbabwe, coached eight swimmers to the Olympic Games, and was an Olympic competitor himself in 1948 for Great Britain, where he was born. He and his family moved to Zimbabwe in 1959, where his son David became a diving champion and fostered a career that now has him coaching diving at the University of Tennessee. Many believe that Frank Parrington's continuous 80 years of involvement in swimming is worthy of the Guinness Book of World Records. That's it for the show today. We'll see you next time on SwimmingWorld.tv.